Let's move on to the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, or PEBEC, which has rolled out its work plan and strategies for the new year 2024. Joining me live from our Abuja studios for more insights into this is the head of the Secretariat, Dr. Jumakio Duwale. She's the Special Advisor to the President on PEBEC and Investments. A warm welcome to the program, Dr. Duwale. It's good to see you in the new year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We, Happy appreciate, New Year. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming through tonight. Uh, walk me through very briefly for just about 30 seconds, one minute. I'm sure there's a whole lot you did last year. But tell me about your work in the past year, 2023 period. Yeah, well, last year was action-packed in the sense that it was elections. There was a lot going on. But we did manage to continue to work on our work plan. We focused mainly on a legislative intervention, the Business Facilitation Act. Those of you recall, we had our omnibus bill that we've been working on for a couple of years, and we got that passed through the 9th National Assembly, and it received presidential assent just in February. And that will be out rolling out um, in the course of this year. We started last year. The second major ramp up we were able to do was with the judiciary. Of course, they didn't have elections with the state judiciaries. We had eight small claims courts when we started 2023. By the end of 2023, we had 25 small claims courts. Several states inaugurated their small claims courts. We helped with training, facilitation, um, uh, rules of evidence, procedural rules. The last thing that I would say was really major for us in 2023 was ramping up on our SABA, that state's action on the business environment plan with the World Bank. Uh, we started our year one, rolling out on a number of develop disbursement linked indicators. States had to make their action plans. Even though some states were in transition, we still had 31 states sign up as of December 31st, 2022, and went on to implement through various eligibility criteria and disbursement links, and they submitted their outputs at the, by December 31st. I think we had up to about 25 states that dispersed. We also got our approval with the external borrowing plan on December 30. I think those are the main highlights of 2023 for the PEBEC Secretariat. Uh, quite a lot on your table in how uh, central what you do at PEBEC and the rest of your team. But what's the broad outline and the chief focus of what you're looking at into the new year, which was released just a few days ago? Talk to me about that. Well, you know, we like to be kept honest. We like to be very <laughs> transparent and empirical, systematic in what we do. It's true. So we, we, we typically roll out Outlook documents, especially when the year is really set and there's not a major sort of distracting activity. Uh, you would recall that PEBEC has a number of streams of work. We work on regulatory interventions, subnational, judicial, legislative. We also have a, sub, a strategic communications intervention. What's particularly new this year is that we have a private sector focused program called the uh, PEBEC Business Champions that focuses on larger uh, businesses, medium to large businesses. We typically would focus on small and medium sized enterprises. So that's the big change. But we'll continue to deepen and drill down. For instance, on our legislative interventions, we'll have a new round for, of an omnibus bill with a section of business law, uh, Nigerian Bar Association and NESG. For judicial, we continue to make sure that the small claims courts are implemented electronically. We're trying to make sure that the judicial reforms include electronic assignment of cases, uploading of judgments, uh, reforms like that. For the subnational, we have the whole saber running out, and that's huge. That speaks to land reform, taxation. It also speaks to framework, regulatory framework for fiber optics. It speaks to framework for PPPs across the states. A lot of interesting stuff going on and SABA. The regulatory reform program, which is the implementation of the Business Facilitation Act, makes sure that ministries, departments, and agencies have service level agreements well publicized to the public and the public to be able to hold them accountable. It's now a legally binding document. You recall, Bosun, that we launched one of our compliance, our half-year compliance report in our, around October last year. Mm. So we continue to track what gets measured gets done and we continue to push with measurable deliverables so that we can all keep ourselves honest. Yeah, I know, but, but all of this put together, I'm sure you'll be, I'm thinking, how does it all fit into the new government's drive for urgent and increased investments? I also noticed in your designation that investment has been added to your portfolio. 
I'm sure you've got a whole lot more to chew moving forward because the new administration is hell-bent on administration, on investment. Mr. President has been to as many countries as possible within just six months in office. So I'm sure, talk to me about this. What's this expansionary review? And how does it key into the revenue, investment, easing of doing business, both for local and foreign investors and businesses? Well, Mr. Mr. President has really held himself out. He's leading from the front as the chief investment officer of this economy. He's gone around um, internationally speaking on behalf of the Nigerian economy. Though the reforms are tough, they're needed, and they're, given, they're getting the desired results, even though we are still in the painful part of the transition as Nigerians ourselves. Moody's, you know, already moved from stable to positive for Nigeria's outlook. And what it is, is that it's a team effort. You know, there are several ministers that work on this area. There's the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. There's the Head of Investment, for, uh, NIPC and NEPC, Export Promotion. What we do at the PEBEX Secretariat, my team and I focus on Nigerian businesses operating in Nigeria because we do believe that they're the strongest testimonials for anyone going to bring in investment or retain investment. So whether foreign investment or domestic investment being plowed back into this climb. It is when the businesses here are thriving, when they're doing well, when they're comfortable with the policies and the attention that they're getting, the support they're getting from government, they would naturally give the testimonials that will bring even more investment into this economy. Uh, interesting that you talk about those business champions uh, earlier. What's the rollout looking going to look like in terms of details? Will you be going uh, from state to state? I'm sure what you've done, your, what you've done over the years. I've had the privilege of interviewing you over the last several year, few years about your work at Pebec and why you why you you on board the subnationals, the state governments, why they are very critical. Are they still critical moving forward? What's going to change? Well, the Business Champions Program, it's, um, I don't want to call it an elite squad, but they are businesses that are being identified because of uh, what they do for the Nigerian economy. So we're going to pilot with about 25 medium-sized enterprises. Then there's a second category of businesses, about three, 23 of them, that generate a revenue of over a billion dollars per annum. So we want to meet with them, catalog their, their needs, and really have a bespoke intervention for those particular 23 businesses. And then the 25 are from priority sectors. What we're looking at in the selection, and we've started that work already from Q4 last year, is the amount of revenue they generate, the amount of taxes they pay, the amount of jobs they create, the amount of export proceeds they get back into the country, and other similar criteria. When those businesses are identified and the, the pilot is piloted uh, Q1 this year. The plan is to have a cohort of about 100 businesses per year and keep them on for three years. And so we keep adding 100 new businesses a year. It's going to be a lot of work because we believe that when you support the medium to large size enterprises that are, for instance, in, la in manufacturing, in agriculture, um, exporting goods, fast moving consumer goods, when you support those businesses, by osmosis, they're off-takers. They're the ones that have a lot of MSMEs clustered around them. So it's a bit of a change in strategy for the PEBEC Secretariat, but we believe that it's going to move the needle. It has in other countries. We've looked at other climbs. We've looked at examples where this has worked, and we've looked at the businesses. We've, we've uh, triangulated our information from several sources, and we believe that we're going to have a strong cohort to go with, and the results will be traceable all the way to GDP. Um, of, course, of course, you know, Dr. Jumaki Oduwale, you sh you're sure I'm going to be knocking on your doors for details of those. I love champions, and we need to really showcase both local and investors, local investors, businesses about what those. So when those, you got those champions together, let me be the first to know here on Arise News. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We appreciate all those <laughs> insights you provided on what you're doing on the Pebec. Thank you for the new year. Wish you all your team all the best.